Hey guys, welcome to the Creative Arena. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an animated card with an image fill effect on hover. So at the end of this tutorial, we're going to create a card that looks like so. And then you can see on the normal state, the card are uh, black and white. And then when you hover, you're going to have this cool transition to color with this uh, detail pop up like so. And then you come over here, you have this, the same effect. And you have the same effect here as well, as you can see with all the contents here accessible. Okay. And also in a situation where you don't want to use this effect to create a card, like what we have here, you can also use it as a, as a before and after effect, like what we have here. And then when you hover, you can see the before and after effect here. And then you do the same here, you hover, you can see just for the images you can apply it only to images and then you can also increase the contrast of the image take for instance you're not okay with this one you want to have something that looks like so you can also do it like that and then i'm going to show you step by step on how to achieve these various designs and how to be creative with it and mind you this effect is possible if you're using both the Elementor free version and the Elementor pro version. And I'm going to show you how to do that also in this video. And it's highly responsive on all devices. And we can check it out on tablet. And we can see what it looks like on tablet. As you can see. And also on mobile as well. So without further delay, let's dive in and get started. In our Elementor editing screen, what I'm going to do here is I'll click on this plus icon here, select the flexible content and select the structure. I'll come over here, set the content width to full width and the minimum height, change the unit from pixel to VH and give it the value of 100. Then justify content to the center and align item to the center for the gaps i'm going to set the gap to 40 pixel for both the column and the row and then the wrap i'll set it to wrap and then i go to the advanced settings for the padding i'm just going to give it a padding of 100 pixel all around and unlink this to the left i'll set it to 20 pixel to the right 20 pixel then i'll come back here to our element area and select the container widget now for this container widget here, I'm going to set the content width to full width. And for the width, I'm going to change the unit from percentage to pixel and give it a value of 300 pixel and a minimum height value of 300 pixel. Okay, then I'm going to come over here to the column gap and I'm going to set it to zero. I'll go to the advanced settings and then I'm going to unlink this and set it to zero, zero. Okay, then for the CSS class, I'm going to give it a CSS class value of box. Then I'm going to come over here for our various container here. For reference purposes, I'm going to rename this to box. Now, in your case, you can leave it as it is, but I only do this for reference purposes, okay? And then for this container here, I'm going to call it parent container. Okay, so now for this box container, I'm going to come over here to add element and select another container widget within it. Now, this container widget within it, I'm going to call it our image box one, okay? Now, for this image box one container, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to the advanced settings and then give it a CSS class value of image box one. Okay. Then the next thing I'll do here is I'll come over to our element area and select the image widget within this image box one. Now I'll go to my media library and select an image. So I'll just select this image here. Then I'll go to the style option. For the width, I'm going to change the unit from percentage to pixel and give it a value of 300 pixel, just like that of the box container. And then for the height, set it to 300 pixel. For the object fit, I'm going to set it to cover. Okay, so now that I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come over here and duplicate this container here. Okay, and then I'm going to rename this image box one to image box two. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the advanced settings for the container and come down to where we have the image box one. I'll change the CSS class to image box two. Okay, so within this image box two, I'm just going to select it and go to the element area and select a container within it. So now we now have a container within it with an image within the image box two. So I'm going to rename this container here to details. 
Now, within this details container, this is the container here. So what I'm going to do here is for the width, I'm going to set the width to 80%. And then for the minimal height, I'm going to set it to 150 pixel. Okay. Then I'm going to come over here, justify content to the center and align item to the center. And for the column gaps, I'm going to set it to 10 pixel all around. Then I'll go to the style option. For the background type, I set it to classic and then set it background color to black. However, I'm going to make it transparent. So I'm just going to drag it this way so it looks like that. Then I'm going to come over to the border radius and then unlink this. To the top, I'm going to give it a border radius of 20 pixel and the right 20 pixel. Then I go to the advanced settings and give it a padding of 20 pixel all around. Okay. Now I'm going to click on this plus icon here and come over here to a widget area and select the heading widget. Now for the heading text, I'm just going to call this Jindu. And then for the HTML tag, I'm going to change it to P tag for SEO purposes. Okay. So we don't have too much H2 on our website. Okay. So now I'm going to come over here to the style option alignment. I set it to the center and then typography. I'm going to come over here. Uh, leave the font family as default and then for the size i'm going to change the unit to rem and give it a value of 1.4 rem for the weight i'm going to set the weight to 600 bold come over here to the color and then i'm going to set the color to white okay then i'm going to duplicate this now for this one here the text here i'm going to set it to web designer and then i'm going to come over to the style option for the font size, I'm going to set the font size to 0 0.9 REM. And then for the weight, I'm going to set it to 500. Okay. Then I go to the advanced settings. And then for the margin, I'm going to come over here and give it the margin of 10 pixel. Okay. Now I'll go back to our add element area. And then I'm going to search for the social widget. This is a social icon widget. And I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to go to the style option. For the font, for the size, icon size, I'm just going to set it to 15 pixel. And then for the spacing, I'm going to set the spacing to 10 pixel. Then I'm going to come over to the color, set it to custom. For the primary color, I'm going to set it to black. And then the secondary color, I'm going to set it to white. Then I'm going to come over here to the icon hover. For the primary color, I'm just going to switch it up. Give it a white color and then secondary color, give it a black color. So now when you hover, you have this. So now the next thing I'll do here is add a hover animation, which is the group. So when you hover, you now have something like this. Okay. So finally, on this social icon, I'm going to go to the advanced settings and then unlink this to the bottom. I'm going to give it a margin of 20 pixels. Then on the details container, I'm going to go back to the details container, come over to the advanced settings. Come down to where we have the positioning and we're going to set the position to absolute. Then I'm going to come over to the horizontal orientation offset and then I'm going to change the unit from pixel to percentage and give it the value of 10%. And then uh, for the vertical orientation offset, I'm going to set it to the bottom and then the unit, I'm going to change it to percentage. I give it a, a value of minus 10%. Okay. So now the next thing I'll do here is I'll come over to the CSS class and give you the CSS class value of details. Okay, so we have successfully designed our container uh, as you can see. Now I'm going to come over here to this image here. This is something I forgot. For this image here, I'm going to go here, go to the style option, and then for the border radius, I'm going to unlink this and give you the border radius of uh, 20 pixels to the top and 20 pixels to the right. So you can see now that the image in the image box 2 is the one having the border radius at the top while the image in the image box 1 is just normal image with no border radius okay so we've successfully added the various css classes to the various containers so now what i'm going to do next is i'll come over to the parent container go to the advanced settings and come down to where we have the custom css now indeed this feature is only available on the elemental pro however this to achieve this particular design, you can also do it if you are using the Elemental free version. So stick to the video to the end and I'll show you how to do it if you are using the Elemental free version easily. Okay, so now I'm going to head over to my code editor where I've written down the CSS code. Okay, so this is the CSS code we'll be using. Not to worry about this code, it's going to be made available on the comment section of this video for you to copy and make use of it for free. So I'm just going to come over here, copy it and come back here and then I'm going to paste 
code here and you can see it has taken effect instantly on our website so now when you hover you can see this wonderful effect here you take the cursor away goes back and you hover you have this wonderful effect so the next thing i'm going to do here is i'm just going to check the responsiveness of our card so we'll come over to the tablet you can see everything looks great on tablet okay so we'll go to the mobile let's see what it looks like on mobile okay so we now have a little problem on the mobile which is really easy to solve so we'll come over to the box container first go to the layout and then we'll make sure that the width is set to 300 pixel and then the height is 300 pixel okay so now we come over here to the image make sure the image is 300 pixel okay and then we'll come over to the image box too and then for the details container details here this one here we'll go to the uh layout and then we'll make sure we set the width to unit to percentage and then give it the value of 80 percent okay so now when we hover on mobile we now have our effect working pretty well on mobile as well okay so now let's head back to our desktop screen and then uh, the next thing we can do here is we can just come over here if you want to add multiple containers multiple boxes you know multiple cards you can just come over here and duplicate this box we're going to duplicate it again and then we can edit the various content and change the images and their name title so i'm just going to do that real quick okay so i've successfully changed the various images and title as you can see here so when you hover you have this wonderful effect here and you hover here you have this wonderful effect here as you can see and then same here you have this wonderful effect as well okay and then it's responsive on all devices you can check it out on tablet and then we can check it out on mobile as well okay so now what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to come over here i'm just going to click on the publish so we can preview it on our website okay so click on preview changes and then uh, when you hover you can have this wonderful effect here you hover you can have this wonderful effect and you hover here all right so let's head back to our code so we can know how to customize it easily all right so now i'm going to go back here to where we have the parent container where the advanced settings and come down to where we have the custom here so this is where the code is so now you're just going to come over here so in a situation where you are not okay with the contrast level as you can see here and you want to adjust it all you just need to do is come over here to where we have this filter grayscale and then you come over to the contrast now you can either increase it or reduce it depending on what you want take for instance let's say we reduce it to one you can see it's now black and white and then you now have this effect like so on the black and white screen okay now you can come over here and then you can also adjust it and increase it to let's say two uh, you see the contrast level is not that high you increase it to four in our situation we left it at four you can increase it to five to eight you can see you can increase it to make it look whatever you want just be creative with it okay so now we're just going to set it at four and then you can also set the grayscale to zero you set the grayscale to zero you're going to have something that looks like so and then when you over you now have something that looks like this but that's the, it doesn't look nice to me so i'm just going to leave the grayscale at one all right so that's pretty much it okay and then for those that are using the elemental free version and you want to achieve this easily all you just need to do is to come over here what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to cut this cut this code here and we can see this is what we have here now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on publish and then i'm going to come over here and then click on the customize And then come over to where we have the additional CSS feature. Now in the situation where you have other CSS code here, all you just need to do is come over to the last one and then you give yourself a space and then you paste your code here and it will take effect instantly. And as you can see, it's working here as well. And it's working here as well. So that's how you can go about achieving this on when you're using the Elementor free version. Okay, so we just publish this and we exit. And so we've come to the end of this tutorial. If you've learned something new from this tutorial, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to our channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified fixed when I drop a new video. And 
feel free to drop your comment wherever you're confused or have any questions and i'll do well to attend to as much as i can but until then see you on our next video for now bye bye